Hey YouTube, um, I'm playing a little bit of catch up because I missed, I got behind one week and then I got sick and had no voice for my uh, typical film day, which is Wednesday. <clears throat> Last week I had no voice so I couldn't catch up. So I'm going to try and catch up on a couple of videos today. Um, so this will be week 18. Uh, what does God, deity, or the divine mean to you? Um, this is also when I kind of, I did put off a little bit so I could think about it a bit more because I think in some instances, as something my husband would say, um, I'm not sure where he came up with this terminology. I think it came from somewhere on Reddit or something because he's on there a lot, but, um, it was, I think like the experience with the divine or divinity in God is kind of like porn. Okay. You can't necessarily describe it or explain it, but you know it when you see it. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that expression came from, but it is something that pops up from time to time here. Uh, so what does it mean to me is going to be completely different from what it means to somebody else. How I view things is, um, as I've said before, I consider myself to be like a jello polytheist because I definitely have some threads of pantheism or panentheism or whatever, but I think that it's that unifying force that connects everything, um, which is where I think it's more panentheism than true pantheism. But I also, whether or not I view the nature of the gods themselves is irrelevant. It's how, if, if I'm calling a deity to help in a ritual or whatever, it's treated as if they are uh, distinct. So that's where I kind of have that jello polytheism thing because I don't think it matters what we as humans tend to think about the nature of the divine. <clears throat> it is what it is. Um, it's sort of like, you know, nature, it is, it's neutral. It, it will be what it will be. It doesn't really matter what you think of it. Um, if you're going to have an experience, you're going to have an experience. And if you're not going to have an experience, you're not going to have an experience. It's not something I think you can force. I think, uh, there are definitely things you can do to help it along, which is the whole point of ritual or ecstatic states or what have you. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, are there people who are, seem to have that compartmentalized, like cut off? I think that happens. I mean, um, there, are, that's, that's like the difference between, you know, an atheist or an agnostic is an agnostic leaves themselves kind of open to the boss possibility that something could happen, but they're not sure because it hasn't happened to them. Um, whereas like an atheist will flat out be like, no, they'll, they will, it, it's a human trait to kind of try and explain things away. And I think that I don't want to be speaking out in generalizations, but I think from what I have seen, most atheists will try to explain away what can be a spiritual or a divine experience by saying, well, it's really just this. And they, they want to say that it's science proving or disproving these things or whatever, but it's really a lot, a lot more nuanced than that. Um, now I have an expression. Um, uh, my best friend and I came up with this and it was sort of a tongue in cheek thing. Um, she has a kind of a foster mom, um, she was going through a hard time as a teenager and she kind of took her in, but she's a very religious woman. Um, the ironic thing with that is it is the daughter of what was my grandmother's best friend. Um, my grandmother's best friend has passed away, but so I grew up knowing her, knowing her as well. Um, not nearly the same capacity as what my friend ended up knowing her as, but 
we had them out at our house a couple of times. They were swimming in the pool. I knew their kids, you know. Uh, but very religious, uh, very Christian religious, I should say, because really that's more of a broad term. But there's this thought that goes around, and I've heard it many times, where it's let go and let God. Um, and we were joking around, and kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing was let go and let Gigi, as in God and Goddess. Uh, what struck us was the sort of, this was totally a joke because we were talking about the issue that we had with that frame of, of reference of just handing it over to the divine to take care of it. And there's a time and a place for that. But in the instance that we were talking about it, it was like, um, an illness or something and like you have to do certain things you can't just hand every single thing over or we wouldn't even as humans be where we are you know we have penicillin for a reason um, but the joke when I was saying let jo let go and let Gigi she was like Gigi kinda sounds like your cool aunt that's sitting at home with you they're sitting waiting at home for you with a martini in one hand and another one in the other hand for you. Um, and it's kind of become the joke that it's kind of like Medea. <laughs> because uh, in one of the Medea films, like one of the main characters is going through a divorce and Medea shows up and is like, you want half? I'll give you half and has a chainsaw and cuts the couch in half. Like that's kind of that attitude. And I just posted this um, with a couple of friends. But being the nature of the topic, this got me thinking about these things to begin with. So, but for me, I've always kind of seen it, it, it sometimes bothers me to not, I'm, I'm fickle on this, when it comes to the names, right? Because traditionally, in a Wiccan format, there would be a name for the god and the goddess, you know, um, but they're oath bound and secret and so unless you're initiated you don't actually know the traditional names even though and this has been a big point of even in the beginning Gardner when he was out there talking about stuff was like well this is we have names we have in our coven but there are other places other covens that they have different names so yeah <laughs> um Sometimes it bothers me to not have names because there isn't any, I can't say any, because I do work with Bridget. I have a couple of other deities that I work with, but they're not the ones that I will call on just to celebrate or do a spiritual working. Bridget being an exception, um, and that is because she's, I, I do, I started again keeping a flame shape, flame keeping shift for Bridget, um, so she's probably the main one that I actually have some sort of devotional that has a specific name devotional to, right? Um, I generally seem to like the lack of confine, ugh, confines that can happen if I just go with Lord and Lady or God and Goddess or what have you. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, it is what it is for me. So I have tried um, when I went to when I was doing like a, it was like a spiritual kind of crisis, right? <clears throat> uh, there was, I started looking into Druidry and some of the Celtic Recon type of stuff because that lovely, like, authenticity kind of debate and the Keep Wicca traditional kind of campaigns got me questioning the label that I use for myself, which... That's funny there, because technically I will just stick with 
the term witch rather than Wiccan. However, I acknowledge the fact that the things that appeal to me more than others generally have come from a Wiccan background. So that being that, um, I think, I think the biggest issue that we have as pagans, broad generalization, is we can tend to get caught up as to what is going on up here and less about knowing what's going on around us and inside from here. Um, because I can sit there and think about how I view the divine up here, but it's a completely different process than how it actually works if I'm in a circle, right? Um, I think therein too is also part of that. That's the, the mysteries, right? Um, you have, it doesn't matter what path you're on. If you're doing it in a religious context, there's the mystery for you to find, right? Even in the revealed religions, that's why there's so much points of contention because yeah, they have a book to point at and say, see, see, it says it in here that this is the way it is. Ultimately, when it comes down to you alone and being that, you know, kind of inner reflection, um, whether you're having a discussion with the divine or whatnot, it's ultimately a very solitary path and very personal one. So it's by its very nature, incredibly hard to put into uh, words. So I think I have rambled on enough for this video, but that'll be week 18. Um, I think I covered, you know, kind of my own views on the divine and such. Um, hope it does at least a little bit of justice, but that'll be it for now. Um, bye. And there's Logan sleeping behind me. Logan. I will never get used to a cold crease in a blanket. Okay. <laughs> bye.